are you doing in my bathroom? You, you, you said you read anywhere, anytime. What? You said I had creative direction. Bro. Hi guys, it's Jenny. Welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm gonna give you five, that's 10, five quick and easy ways to improve your mental health as a college student during school. Because I know this is a really stressful time right now where everyone's going into midterms, applying to jobs, applying to internships. These are five things I actually do every single day, if not every single day, at least four to five times a week to improve my mental health, basically prepare my brain to attack the chaos that is my life right now. Without further ado, let's get started. The first thing I've really, really been trying to do is to read at least a chapter of any one of my books every single day. I find that helps really relax me. This is like 10 times better than watching Keeping Up With The Kardashians. Well, it's not Keeping Up anymore, it's The Kardashians on Hulu. Better than scrolling on Instagram, scrolling on TikTok. I deleted TikTok by the way, if you haven't, you should. It just like prepares you better, I think. It makes your mind think more. It's important for you to exercise your brain by like gaining and absorbing knowledge from the world. So I highly, highly recommend my number one thing is to read. Now, these are the books I'm currently reading or I'm trying to read within the next month or so. This is the first one. It's called Crying in H Mart by Michelle Zahner. I'm about like halfway through the book so far and I got this when I was in New York at the Strand. Part of what attracted it to me is the cover of the book has ramen noodles and it's very it's just very Asian. It's screamed very Asian American to me. And so far honestly it's been really really good. Long story short it's about her mother that's dying of cancer and she tries to cope with it throughout the book by relating to her Asian heritage. And it, I just, I just love the book because it's so, it's funny, you're like, you're gonna be crying, but it's gonna be tears of joy and tears of sadness at the same time. If you're not Asian American, I feel like you wouldn't connect with this as much. So these are two other ones that I recommend. How to win friends and influence people. I got this based off of Jen M's like 10 books you need to read before you die. So far, I've only read the first page because I like to finish books before I start a new one, but I heard that this is really, really good. And it's good for people that are like applying to internships and talking to recruiters, recruiters, because you can, you know, influence people and, you know, make those connections. I recommend this one. Okay, and the last one, which is probably like the most popular like self-help book, I would say is called Atomic Habits. It's actually like a really big like book physically, like if you compare it to my head, like it's pretty, it's pretty big. So um, I haven't read this at all. I just got it on Amazon, I ordered it. Apparently this book changes your life and I'll let you know what I thought of it after I um, read it. Discover the secret to results that last. Of course, this is about making changes to bad habits, getting bad habits out of your life and adopting good ones. I think that's really interesting because changing my habits is something I haven't really thought of. I'm more of just like change what's around me instead of like what's internally programmed into my life. So this is something that I think will really like alter my, my entire mind. Those are all non-fiction books so far. I used to like be a huge fan of fiction books for some reason. Not for some reason. I know why I was into it, okay? It was because like of this fantasy world with like a girl as a heroine. Like I was like into Hunger Games. I was into Percy Jackson. I was into recently I read Six of Crows and the, the one before that it was like this girl. I think her name was Alicia. I forgot. I literally forgot. But it's a trilogy and it's by the same author. But that was also amazing. But since then I've listened to my um, more successful friends that says I should transition, not fully transition, but like try out some nonfiction. So that's what I've been doing. And so far I'm really loving it. Now I like reading my books. Well, obviously you can read your books at any time of the day, duh. But I really like to read my books at night after I've done my entire nighttime skincare routine, after I did all my work for the day, I tuck into the covers, especially when it's winter right now, it's, gonna, it's getting into the, the cold season. So I like to read my book with like my little salt lamp next to my bed and just read away. The second thing I've been doing to improve my mental health is to go on walks every day. Now, these walks range from between 10 minutes to an hour, depending on like my schedule for the day. If I'm really busy, I'm not gonna walk an hour and like not leave time to finish my work that night. Cause usually I don't start things until the night, the day of or the night before, so. It really depends on the day, but I'm not a morning person. So I like to walk in the evenings or in between classes. If I have time, I walk with my backpack on in between classes. You can't do that for a long time, I've discovered, because I went on like a 40 minute walk with my backpack once and my back was like literally breaking. 
by the end of the walk, I was like crawling back to my apartment trying to get my backpack off. Anyways, I recommend going walks because it's a nice break away from school. It's nice to immerse yourself in nature. Oh, you should walk where there's a lot of trees around, a lot of greenery. Don't walk like, and if you live in this city, it's a little harder. Try to find some greenery. We have like a quad here at U of I that I like to walk around and U of I actually has a lot of like greenery and trees and stuff like that. So it's not hard to find some nature to immerse yourself in. Nature like calms you down and it's like a part of life. Nature is life. You are life. You are nature. Being in nature is very good. That's something I learned from my psychology class that I took. And then my third um, thing I do to improve my mental health is I listen to podcasts. This goes along with the walking thing because on my walks, I like to listen to podcasts. Listening to music is nice. I do that sometimes, but it just like gets tiring after a while, especially for me because I listen to like the same 20 songs over and over again. My favorite podcast ever, Jay Shetty's um, On Purpose. He talks about a lot of mental health things as well as like physical health things. I think the first ever episode I listened to was him and I think his name was Dr. Amen. He's like a celebrity doctor now. I literally saw him. I think the day after I saw, I listened to the podcast, I saw him show up on the Kardashians when like Khloe Kardashian was getting like a brain scan. How small is the world? Like I literally saw him the next day on a TV show. Quickly summarize the podcast that changed my entire mind and got me hooked to On Purpose was basically he was saying, that in order for you to work on your mental health, you need to have a solid physical health beforehand. So like brain health is what he's saying people should focus on before they try to like improve their habits or whatever. And he does this by scanning your brain and like looking for holes in your brain to see like what brain damage you've had. And of course like alcohol and drug and drug substance abuse and stuff like that have a negative effect on your brain health. So it's harder for those who like have had concussions or have had like alcohol dependence issues, drug dependence issues, stuff like that to like have a happy, healthy brain. And that's why like people that have that, that type of physical brain like get into like depression and like can have a lot of anxiety like that. The way I thought about it, which I feel like is very like engineering way to think about it, you need to have a good hardware basis to implement the software that makes you run smoothly, you know? So that was really, really cool. I really told that like idea to a bunch of my friends and they were like, wow. He has a lot of like celebrity, like I don't wanna say clients, guests, celebrity visitors that talk about um, their experiences in their life and stuff like that. One of the people I listened to was Kendall Jenner. That was a really fun one. And um, Lily Reinhart, she's the actress from Riverdale, but also she started a bunch of new things recently. And I really, really love her because she gives off such a like genuine demeanor and I, I like love her. Go on walks and listen to podcasts at the same time. My fourth thing that I've been doing is when I wake up at the beginning of every day and I say, I will have a good day today. I got this from Dr. Amen. It just primes your day. So you like have a good day, you know? Cause I feel like sometimes I've done this a lot. Sometimes I wake up and I'm like, oh my God, today's gonna be the shittiest day ever. It's raining, it's cloudy. I have 10,000 assignments due. And then I end up having a bad day because like that was my initial mindset going into the day, you know? Me saying to myself that I will have a good day, even if like some terrible things happen and like even if I miss a few missing assignments, since I basically primed myself into believing that my day will be good no matter what happens, the negative things that happen don't even matter anymore. And it's just like me focusing on the positives. I think that's another thing I've been trying to do is to be more of a positive person instead of a negative one. Me saying I will have a good day to myself. Every Every single day really helps that make that happen and if you don't want to say i will have a good day because you don't like that for some reason you can say anything else that's just like a morning affirmation you can if you have like body image issues or something you can look at in the mirror in yourself and say like i am beautiful something like that i don't know that was kind of cheesy just say something positive about yourself about your day about your life about your career every single morning and it'll just switch your brain into thinking in a better mindset fifth and final thing that is i think the most like materialistic thing i do to increase my mental health is i dress nice for school i dress nice for school for university if i have a lot of things to do or if i'm under a lot of stress and you may think that dressing nice doesn't change your mind, but it does, and let me tell you why. Because you're dressed nice and you put on this nice dress, I don't wear any dresses, so I don't know why I said that, but you put on these cool pair of jeans and like this cute little thrifted top and like a nice jacket on top, you feel like a fucking badass, right? So when you walk into the classroom, you're like, okay, 
I'm a fucking badass woman and I'm ready to listen to this fucking lecture. It'll make you feel powerful and give you confidence. In my opinion, when I show up to school, I mean, I, I do this too when I'm not feeling like putting on a slay outfit. I show up in like sweatpants and a hoodie or whatever, but I find that since I'm like so comfortable, it's hard for me to focus on like the lesson and the lecture because I'm so comfortable and I'm just like relaxing and on my phone and stuff like that. So I know sweatpants and hoodies may be very comforting and easy to put on, but if you fall asleep in class, that is why. Yeah, so those are the five quick and easy ways that I, as a college student, better my mental health. I actually do these things, I swear to you. I actually do these things every single day, if not every single day, like many, many times a week and they extremely help me. I've been doing these, I think for the past, I think the last two months, and I've really seen an increase in like how I approach people, how I approach myself. I'm not like a slob in bed. Of course I have those days sometimes, but I'm not a, I'm not a slob in bed until like 2 p.m. anymore. Like I actually like wanna get up and attack my day and get these done. So thank you for watching the video. Um, I hope that you can implement these things into your daily life and see an increase in positivity and happiness in your life. Thank you for watching. Have a nice day. Bye.